Oh, gracious God, we give you just thanks and praise for another day, for another, another day to, to live and laugh and cry. Then I become an invalid. One day, I was standing in the shower. Peter, my son, is there right with me. He's helping me. And I get through with the shower, and I ask for the towel, and he gives me the towel. And I'm drying my head and my face, and all of a sudden, I got a mouthful of hair. And I had wonderfully long, wavy red hair, which was a very big part of my vanity, you know. And that night, we, uh, we, had a, we had a hair cutting party. And uh, I'm sitting in a chair, and Peter's got the things, and, and they've got a camera. And first thing he did is give me a mohawk. And you know, they took a picture of that. It's a, just a really weird thing to be taking your dad's hair off, and shaving him, and so forth else. And it was just such a celebration. <laughs> This just deep hankering for a uh, steak and shake cheeseburger and a malt. And Peter went right out to the steak and shake over here on, on Keystone, not too far away. And he was back in a very short time with this luscious cheeseburger and a chocolate malt. And he cut that sandwich in two and he gave it to me. And I'm sitting there looking at this this cheeseburger with the uh, pickles dropping, you know, kind of showing, and the onions, and then the mustard, and the ketchup, and, and I put it in my mouth, and I took a big bite, and tasted nothing. Nothing. And life is about giving away, and giving up, and, you know, ultimately, we lose it all. We've come together with Tom to share with him in a very careful and very intentional way our thoughts and our prayers and our regard for him. Most especially, we give thanks for him. In many ways, he has served and touched the staff of the surgery department, as well as the patients and families that it serves. During his time at St. Vincent's, Tom has created, nourished, and sustained a pastoral care presence to the surgical area. His ministry has contributed to the community of healers at our facility who are entrusted to care for those who have come to surgery for healing. This circle that has gathered, this circle of this healers, today creates our sacred space as we share some sacred time together in this service. And so being a community of committed healers of the body, mind, and spirit, our service today is based on the Native American healing circle, the Medicine Wheel. One of the things we know, and medicine is learning today in new ways, relearning because, you know, we've known it for centuries, is that, that we are body and soul. before a beloved person of the village sets out on a long journey. Often a blanket is specially blessed and passed from person to person to hold or to touch in order to endow that blanket with love, prayers of protection, and hopes for a safe journey and a future reunion. We are more than just a kind of physical conglomerate here. And amazing things happen in medicine particularly when your body and your spirit are all in the battle together. You are a whole human being, and it is very important that when you are in treatment to let that treatment be complete. Creator God, send the spirit of life to Tom out of the west, the direction of the sundown. Let him remember in every moment that the sunset is beautiful, even as he fades into you. Give him a beautiful color. 
Give him a great sky for his setting so that when his time comes to meet you, he can come in glory. The battle is for me to have as much time as I can to die well and to clear the decks so that when I do die, I am as free as possible to move on and not be regretful of anything in this life, but to enter into the great mystery. You warm in the days ahead. Beautiful. It's just beautiful. And one of the privileges that I have been given is that I am present and I am here and I know I'm dying and I got agenda. And the agenda is to celebrate in life, to stay connected. So I just want to encourage you that support one another because it's hard back there. And when I, as long as I can come in here, I still will be supporting you because alone, none of us can do it. It just can't be done alone. Nice seeing you again. How are you doing? Okay. Watch the shoulder. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a, an armor that we must wear, you know, and that, you know, that I wore, you know, a soul armor under my scrubs that protected me enough from the pain I was facing to be able not to run, you know. And so this isn't about being unprotected, but the thing that we do very often, and I know really good people who do this, is they put on too much. So there are two things. Number one, one of the things that we tend to do is, particularly if we're lone rangers, is we're not taking care of ourselves, and we're not grounding ourselves in places where we can pass it on and get rid of it. And the other, th and so what we do is we bring our own denial into the situation, and we are not available at all, or we uh, we hide in our professionality, and it is so important with those people who are facing death, that, that we are able to wear a light enough armor that we can be with them and be in some kind of relationship with them. That's a critical piece. We all kind of know that, but I've, I'm just finding out in spades. That piece is very important. And the other thing that happens to us, particularly this happens to some doctors, and it, it's as if we're on a crusade against disease. And one of the very hard things for some doctors to do is to be able to let go and to be able to let a person die without seeing it as a personal failure. You know, you know, we do it all the time. Say, I lost one today. You know, and when I hear that, I just, you know, you didn't lose one. You just came to the end of your work with that person. And so there are ways in which we, you know, through, you know, through our own grandiosity or, you know, or through some you know, absolutely unrealistic expectations of ourselves, that we get ourselves on a kind of holy crusade and can't let go of it. And it kills us.